Right, welcome back. Now, as the opposition inches closer to unity under the National Super Alliance, NASA, Ford Kenya leader Moza Swetangula has said that he is ready to sacrifice his presidential dreams for someone else in the opposition. Wetangula, Amani's Musalia Mudavedi, Wipers Kalonzo Musyoka, and ODM's Raila Odinga met this week to stitch together the coalition that will face Jubilee's President Uhuru Kenyatta at the ballot on August 8th. They agreed to form a joint management committee to run the new coalition, sources have said. This alliance is a special purpose movement to uproot the Jubilee regime from power for its misrule and abdication of responsibility and collusion and runaway corruption and building state of Kenya's economy. It is a vehicle for an alternative, accountable, responsible and responsive leadership that will restore hope in self-government among Kenyans. Right, so the makings of a united opposition. Obvious question. Do you think they will last until August 7th, at least? <laughs> or is something going to happen to break this alliance apart? Faith, I'll start with you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think they will last. I, I think uh, they will last. And I think they have a very um, strong strategy. The way I look at it is that they don't want... The reason why they have not told uh, us and, you know, the supporters, their uh, uh, flag bearer, they could be using a delaying tactic so that, you know, the, the, the deadline anyways is in May. And so when it gets to May, this technical committee that has already been formed will look at um, the possibility of getting uh, whoever candidate and the running mate right. and then probably announce in May for just to keep the house in order, you know, and to, keep to, avoid, kind of momentum, to avoid any breakup. Right. But they, they, they have a chance. If they, they stick together, definitely it's a very difficult, uh, you know, task for the technical committee mm. because they have to look at a proper arithmetic that will work as opposed to 2013. Mm -hmm. um, and I know this is, it's my, in my opinion, I think that for it to work, they might have to consider you know, a different arithmetic from 2030. That means we could, uh, Raila Odinga could possibly, you know, surrender for somebody else well, like, to run. But which other person? Well, yeah, because Betty last time rightly Musa said that Kalonzo took himself out of the race, but Angula has taken himself out of the race. Who's left? Okay. I'm just thinking, like, speaking about the arithmetic that is, but I don't know what other formula you know, exists, but like, which candidate enjoys a support from, you know, beyond the counties that they come from, beyond the, you know, ethnic support and this is a coalition a and support. we're saying we are backing you up we are all behind you Raila is saying i'm behind whoever kalonzo musioka has already said i'm i'm, I'm ready to to sacrifice to, to sacrifice as has and which is i i personally interviewed kalonzo musioka some time back and he told me i have sacrificed enough times in 2017 some, day, some days ago is it weeks ago he said he's the, ready to yes, to sacrifice, to sacrifice. We're tangula, so we have yeah. exactly we have a few <laughs> candidates there we just have two left faith so which are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> musala mudavidi and maybe kalonzo musioka as a running mate well, well we we could be shocked and see that arithmetic coming out i don't know we'd be shocked if people vote for that team but you know <laughs> Um, there, there are people who are talking about sacrificing the presidential ambitions who had no hope, and I'm sorry to say it, but, but there's nothing Tangula, to sacrifice no. in the first What yeah. are you sacrificing? No. <laughs> no. Okay, so the question about Kalonzo Musyoka is that he has felt bitter in the past, and I, I, I felt that, that's, that the mm -hmm. sentiment he's conveying is bitterness, that he has sacrificed too Enough often. Times, yeah. And at the, you know, at, the, uh, at the rallies, he'll say, you know, I, I'm willing to sacrifice, but within the counties, he's saying, you know what, this is my chance, this is my turn, you know. Yes. So there's that feeling that uh, he might not be willing to step down. So that's one possible candidate in terms of his own ambitions. In terms of whether people will back him, that's another story altogether. The strongest candidate out of them all is Raila Odinga. But he, again, if I was Raila, I don't want to feel, I don't want these people to feel like I'm imposing myself on them, mm -hmm. even though 
seriously, you guys, yeah? Uh, but <laughs> so he's going to keep quiet, which is what he has done. He's taken a step back. He sent James Orengo into the foray for him. Mm -hmm. And James Orengo is most likely being the diplomat and, uh, you know, trying to cool down everyone's yeah. tempers and letting them all know everybody will be taken care of. There'll be an arithmetic somewhere. Um, but at the end of the day, unless this NASA alliance brings forth its strongest candidate versus Jubilee's strongest uh, candidate, mm -hmm. they are not going to get very far. Musalia Mudavadi does something every, you know, six months to an election that's always so interesting. He actually, <laughs> he, he actually oh, waits out, he waits it out like four or five years, he waits it out, everybody is out there campaigning and rallying and fighting corruption and then he comes and he says, you know what, I'm the best yeah. candidate. I'm like, what, what are you talking least, about? <laughs> so yes. you, but I think this time round, what has impressed me is that they seem to have a strategy because they're playing their cards very close to their chest. Mm -hmm. I mean, they keep meeting. These guys, mm -hmm. every week we're being told NASA leaders mm -hmm. are coming up with this, but they're not actually coming out to tell us what. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason is that they don't want to come out too soon. We've got how many months to elections? About six. six about mm -hmm. six months. Mm -hmm. I think they don't want to come out too soon and say, okay, it's wetangular. So they know Kalonzo a carrot can be dangled in front of him, <laughs> or this guy can be offered this and this guy. So they're, they're playing very close. But then we keep saying, this arithmetic, how is it going to be worked out? Who is going, I mean, we all know, Raila is the strongest candidate. Mm -hmm. But then again, there are the other voters, I'm not talking about you people, other people <laughs> out there, who really don't want to vote for Jubilee, mm -hmm. but then they're looking at NASA and they're saying, if it's Raila, they're Raila fatigued. Mm -hmm. yes. He's been there yeah. all along. So they're asking themselves, what new thing is he going to bring? And then they look at the other people, nah, that one is colorless, that one not charismatic, that one, you know. Mm -hmm. So let's just wait and see this. Unless they name a candidate, let's not judge them yet. All right, wait yeah. and see is exactly what they want us to do, so I guess. <laughs> That's what we'll do. Let's move on now. And in what seems to have become something of a norm, the Kenya Red Cross Society has launched an, an aid appeal dubbed Embrace a Family in response to the, to the ravaging drought that by all indications could result in widespread famine. The society reports that over 2 million Kenyans are at risk of starvation. Now, in July 2011, Kenya Red Cross spearheaded the Kenyans for Kenya campaign in response to the drought and famine of that year. And and by the second day of that campaign, close to 20 million shillings had been raised through M-Pesa contributions. And overall, 1 billion shillings was raised in aid of Kenyans in need. And the question we're asking today, is this something that has become, you know, a norm? Of course, this is a humanity issue. And uh, should we get to a point where we, we stop and say, yes, we want to help, but there should be a strategy, uh, you know, by the government, by people who are tasked with, you know, just being prepared for such situations? And I'll start with you, Betty. Okay. Um, I, this is what I feel. Uh, essentially, we have d uh, disaster relief programs and we have, we, th we have the funding. What is happening is that we're not responding fast enough. Um, to turn around, Red Cross does seek aid from the public and that is an essential part of uh, the, the the way they operate is also very important for the public to feel that they can contribute mm -hmm. towards uh, alleviating a situation but in terms of what has happened in this particular situation it's become common that you know we're waiting for things to get so bad yet mm -hmm. we have the programs we have the relief food we have you know we have silos uh, uh, of storage of food why isn't this working properly and mm -hmm. th those are the mechanisms we need to have uh, uh, strengthened and investigated if there's any loopholes mm -hmm. that is causing starvation and famine, mm -hmm. which is actually, you know, it's a deliberate situation as opposed to a drought, right. um, then we need to have that addressed. But the fact that uh, the, the public is being asked to contribute, that in itself is not a negative. Um, you'll see this happen in, in countries all around the world that, you know, you are encouraged to participate as, mm -hmm. as citizens when a uh, disaster occurs. So I feel that in itself, what Red Cross does is essential to the social contract, mm -hmm. the social fabric of the the nation but it should not be the first stop right. it should it should not be the only way that we can act mm -hmm. it should be one of the ways that we can act as citizens but the government should have been doing this on their own yeah. right anyway right Julie it shouldn't be the first stop and mm -hmm. the question many people are asking you know every other time this happens there always has been a forecast of such a situation right. who's failing who becomes the question 
Right, because it seems that we're being asked to be a backup for a failing mm. system that knew about this in November of last year, mm. set aside funds to buy the maize, to give direct transfers, to support these families through these situations, mm. and yet we still need outside intervention. And they're coming back to us, the taxpayer, whose money they set aside, by the way, for, for these things to happen. And Red Cross asking for one billion shillings, like the last time, Kenya mm. for Kenyans, um, which we, there were questions about how that money was accounted for. Mm. So you also now get donor fatigue. Because you want to rely on your government to be there for you in times of need. And yet they come, again, uh, food security starts with you, not only your own personal security. <laughs> so um, it's, it becomes a bit technical at that point in time. Right. I, I so. think um, it's a, the way I look at it, it's like the government has abdicated its duty. And I'm not talking about the central government only, mm -hmm. even the county government. Right. I mean, now everything has been scaled down to the lowest level. So today we have no reason to say a village somewhere, guys are starving, and there's a governor and a whole unit of government that is supposed to know up to the last <coughs> citizen of that particular location what is happening there. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, nobody has been doing that. As she says, the flag was raised in November. We're in February. Finally, Red Cross has come out and said, guys, we need help. Mm -hmm. Why is it always Red Cross is coming out like it's the government in waiting for disasters and to step in? And whom does the Red Cross come to? We, the taxpayers, mm -hmm. as she says. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be that way. Why are we doing what the government should be doing? Central government, county government should be doing. It's a very sad situation. People are actually very angry. Mm -hmm. Like, this has been happening not not even a cycle of 10 years, three, four years, they're right. coming back to us. And not just for food, mm -hmm. rain, right. floods, they'll be there. I don't know, it will be famine next. And it will be, it's also like we are always well, prepared yeah. for always. to have disasters, always. <laughs> not to alleviate them. And we've made a, 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 an annual, you mm -hmm. know, contribution program. Red Cross is always annually That, that is an abuse of charity, to. if exactly. you ask me. Kenyans are very charitable Right, people. ladies, but still, still speaking of charity and coming back to the tax fair. Wow. Finally, Her Excellency Margaret Kenyatta, the First Lady of the Republic of Kenya, is asking you to join her on the 12th of March to run towards zero deaths for mothers and children. Meanwhile, His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, the President of the Republic of Kenya, and his government are yet to resolve a doctor strike that is steadily heading towards the second month mark. Then, together with the call from Kenya Red Cross asking Kenyans to save the country from starvation, are we allowing our government to abdicate its, 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 its responsibility to the people who elected it? Right, we've talked about abdicating responsibility. Mm -hmm. So now we've started with the food, now we are on to <laughs> the mobile clinics. Perhaps we should have mobile clinics to transport food around the country. <laughs> uh, because it's, it's the, bur the burden is a bit much for the mm -hmm. people of Kenya. And I think coming at this time, perhaps the First Lady and her team should not have uh, sent out this uh, call for people to run, mm -hmm. because the doctor's strike has been biting for mm -hmm. two months, mm -hmm. and people are suffering. So, uh, Sharon, do you think that, are, are you going to run? <laughs> um... No. <laughs> I wasn't going to run even before this became an issue in social media because I wasn't prepared for it. I haven't been training and whatnot. But uh, I mean, the question, and of course, this uh, span out of that article that was written by uh, Joki Chege. And I think it was the article in itself was really in, a, in very good taste, in my opinion, in the sense that it really raised an, uh, the idea or the fact that uh, the first lady's heart is in the right place. Uh, you know, the, the care concern for maternal and child health. But to speak and to ask Kenyans now to run to raise the money for them to access healthcare, which is not being offered at the moment, and to have been silent for eight weeks while this is happening, mm -hmm. really presents a conflict of really, uh, are you honestly and genuinely concerned about this? And of course, she comes, she has that soft power, of course, uh, to just add her voice to this particular issue. Mm. I don't know yeah. what you think. I, I, I totally uh, think that the, first, the timing is not right. Uh, I, their messaging as well is not right, and that is why they're getting a lot of backlash on social media. But again, surely we have a doctor's strike, like you have said, <laughs> and Kenyans are suffering, drought and everything, and you're asking them to come and run for health that government should be providing she has done a fantastic job mm -hmm. we don't dispute that and by the way we have uh, now we have 47 um clinics mobile clinics mm -hmm. so i i mean i hope they're working on i don't know what else we're raising money for you haven't been told 
because we have, uh, yeah we have the 47 clinics now all right um ladies we are actually out of time now i wish we could speak more about this one uh, but just before we do i uh, just remind you of our twitter poll tonight we had asked you uh do you think amina mohammed deserved uh, to be the au's next chairperson and as 25 percent of you say yes she did deserve that post which she did not clinch and 75 percent of you do not think that she deserved it uh, many thanks for your views and for engaging with us tonight and that's where we wrap up my name is sharon momani have a good night i am good night see you next week right thank you ladies